Hey everybody, I'm Henry Gordon Smith from Agritecture and we're here in the Netherlands today as I explore how greenhouses all around the world are using new technologies to drive forward sustainability and yield. And today I'm here at De Kruidenaar and I'm joined by Richard Smits, who is the head crop grower here. How are you doing Richard? I'm fine, thank you. <laughs> and you? I'm good. It's so good to be here in this massive facility. Can you give us an idea of what De Kruidenaar does and the scale of this facility? Yeah, we grow inside. We have a greenhouse and we grow crops outside, herbs. Uh, it's about 30 hectare uh, herbs outside and 3.5 hectare inside and uh, mainly basil. And we grow it on water. And next to the herbs, we also have 5 hectare uh, capsicums, paprika. Yeah, I definitely see the basil. We're literally in a sea of basil here. When you say it's growing on water, it's a shallow raft system, right? So it's floating yeah. systems, yeah. but the water is obviously hugely important because yeah. that is how you deliver the nutrients and the oxygen yeah. Yeah. and what the plants need to grow. Can you That's tell us right. a little bit more about your customers? Who's buying your product? Uh, the supermarket in Holland, uh, Albert Heijn mainly. That's our biggest customer. So uh, uh, nationally, all, all, the, all the herbs that you see at Albert Heijn is coming from us. And I was reading on your website that sustainability is something that's very important to your yeah. business. Yeah. Can you tell us a bit more about your sustainability objectives and what your customers care about in that regard? Uh, quality, that's the most, most important thing. Uh, the color must be right, the taste must be good, very important. Uh, shelf life, we give a shelf up at eight or nine days on basil. And so, yeah, that's what we... So that freshness, that quality, and also my understanding is you're not using pesticides no. here in the greenhouse no, controlled no, no. environment. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about the water. You mentioned that's a water-based system. What are some of the challenges you've had historically in maintaining clean water to be able to grow the best plants? Oxygen. That was, oxygen. Oxygen was the Tell most it. most important thing. When we started um, 12 years ago, we had some oxygen, but not so much. Uh, movement of the water is important, but those two combined. If you don't have oxygen, stop. And so for, for the basic person, un explain to us why oxygen is so important for growing high quality basil. Yeah, every, every, everybody needs oxygen, so also basil. And if you grow on water, the water becomes dead if you don't supply oxygen. In the ground it's different because you have oxygen in the ground. In the water you don't have, so you have to add it. Yeah. If you don't have oxygen in the water as well, you could have algae blooms yeah. and that's going to reduce the amount of oxygen the plants get and the nutrients they get, right? Yeah. So this is very important. Yeah. So I want to go back a little bit. What were some of the ways that you were managing or trying to create oxygen in originally in this farm? In, in, in the first time we used uh, very simple pumps and yeah, you know the, the, the stones, what in the aquarium? Air stones. Air stones, that's our first. We did it with air stones. What we noticed was around the air stone, it was growing perfect. Two meters ahead, it didn't grow. So that's why we can think we need more oxygen, but also movement in the water. So you're getting oxygen, but it was really only in some areas yeah. and not through your whole system. Yeah. So the problems weren't really solved through the system no, wide. And no. this is again, a massive facility. So yeah. I can imagine that you noticed areas where that yeah. quality was in decline. So what did you do? How did you find solutions to that problem? No, when, when we the, the water is non-stop moving, so I pump non-stop 24-7, I pump the water around. Then in the middle we have the electric uh, water crane and we made uh, all the way through the pools tubes with holes in it. So when I put water, now it goes equally around the pool. So that's, that was also already a big difference, but we didn't still have the nano bubbles. So you see still the spots, it, it was getting better, but not perfect. So you just mentioned that you used some engineering and some ways to yeah. solve it, but then you discovered nanobubbles from Moliere. Yeah. Can you tell us about that? When did you meet them and how did you learn about the technology and what did you think? It was in 2019 when we installed the first nanobubbles and yeah, we said we want to try it, but the, it wasn't known in the, in the agricultural world. So we tested it for three months to see what happens. Now we tested it in the other greenhouse and the water was so dirty, I was thinking or I remove it and replace it or I start with nanobubbles. I didn't replace the water, so I had the old dirty water, was already seven years old, never changed it. Then we start with the nanobubbles and three months later, the water was crystal clear. In three months, yeah. water that you had been using for seven years yeah. was cleaned through the Moliere nanobubble technology. Yeah. And how difficult was it for you to install that into your system? How difficult was it for your team to use this new solution? Not at all, plug and play. It was really plug and play. You could just put it in and it put worked it with your and existing we have a, a big, uh, reservoir. And, reservoir yeah. Yeah. and we put them in, he sucks it out, goes to the Moliere technique and he sucks it in the pools and that's it. 
And so you're using two different solutions, if we can talk about them. One is for your reservoir, which is the upfront water, and that can get dirty because there's rain and there's yeah. organic matter that gets into that. And then you're also using one, some in the greenhouses. Yeah. Can you tell us about the first one a little bit and what you've seen there? The first one outside? Yeah. Yeah, we installed it because we had al algae grow in the summer. So we tested it and it helps. Helps to minimize the algae growth that yeah. happens from the organic matter. Yeah. And that's the Moliere Clear system, yeah. I believe. So, okay, great. And then in the greenhouse, which is most important, so yeah. where you have all the water and the growth, mm -hmm. we're having the problems, you've installed another Moliere system, which yeah. delivers nanobubbles into yeah. the system yeah. here. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah. So uh, we have cleaner water to start with, and we clean it again before it gets in the water. And right. it's pumping nonstop around. So. And so was it difficult for you as a grower to sort of think about nanobubbles, I think a lot of people might be skeptical and say like, what are they? How did you think about that technology when it was first pitched to yeah, you? That's, that's why we wanted to start it for three months and see what happens. And I'm a very practical guy and you can read all about it, but I want to see it. They can tell me everything, but I want to see it. No, and what I saw was perfect. Because we always had uh, some uh, biofilm in the water around the plastic okay and after three months we didn't have it it just went away so yeah. you could already observe that it oxidated the water was cleaner it was yeah. oxidating yeah. right and that's because those those bubbles were cleaning that yeah. water yeah. and, and yeah. adding more oxygen consistently yeah. Yeah. okay fantastic and so what about growth you know I think there's a, an aspect of cleaning the plants itself but did you notice anything any changes in the quality of the plant yeah, it's much better how much if the, if the plant has enough oxygen especially in the summer when it needs a lot yeah, you see the difference in quality that, that's that's very short sure because what I told in the beginning, we had enough, not enough oxygen and not enough movement, the quality was much less. And so, you know, so when heat goes up in the water, the oxygen goes down. So that's the point you're making, right? In the summertime, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. it's more difficult to maintain yeah, oxygen yeah. in the water. So did you notice any yield differences or is it more that it's more resilient to the summer or both? No, the yield was much less in, in, in the summer, in the beginning. Eh? Yes. When we started nanobubbles, it was much better. Got it. So, you know, yield goes down typically because that oxygen drops in the summer, yeah, but yeah. now you're able to maintain a consistent yield, which means yeah. overall your yield is higher. Quality is much better, so we can harvest everything yeah. instead of 30% uh, or 70% in the summer. So you had a lot less waste as yeah, well yeah. because, you yeah. know, you have certain metrics that your customers want in the product, yeah. and that was reduced because there's more consistency. Yeah, yeah. That's I have a question, you know, you said before that you had oxygen in different parts of the system. Were there also spots that were weaker before and now it's more consistent because you have oxygen sort of dis dispersed? Yeah, exactly that. Because what I told you in the beginning, we had always the zones and that's it. And now the rotation is much better in the water. Yeah. And you have, I added non-stop, eh, the nanobubbles. So yeah, it's consistently it's going. It's consistently going, 24-7. Yeah. And so we're here in your newest greenhouse. And yeah. so I think it's really important when you make this kind of investment that every single square meter is valuable because you've got a yeah. controlled system, yeah, yeah. you've got lights, all this investment, all the staff. So it makes a lot of sense why you would want that. Can mm -hmm. you tell us a bit about the return on investment? Have you thought about the return on investment of time or money based on the fact that you've used Moliere's system? Yeah, I don't know about the cost because that's not my, not you're my the, kind you're the crop of, grower, I'm the crop yeah. manager. So, but what I see is that the quality is much better. So you always get it back, the investment. Yeah, that's the most important investment yeah. for a grower, yeah. Yeah. really. Quality, quality is everything. When quality is okay, customers are happy, people are working are happy because they don't have to sort out. It's for the, for the labor, everything is good, so. And you mentioned the system is plug and play, but I think a lot of farmers, especially when they're adopting new technologies, they're concerned about maintenance or support. What has your experience been working with Moliere on the customer service and support for their technology? Yeah, that's okay when we have, Big issues we call rule, and he tried to be as as, as, as soon as possible. Yeah. And we have uh, a maintenance guy here on the on the on the in the greenhouse, and he checks them every week. He may clean them when it's necessary. So it's it's not a lot of maintenance. Sounds like it's a relatively easy system yeah. that you've seen great results yeah. for. Well, thank you for being so candid and sharing all of that with us, Richard. Really appreciate seeing your facility. It's impressive. The quality, the smell is all very good. Yeah. So here you go, you heard it here in the Netherlands, speaking about Moliere's technology at one of the best herb growers here with Richard. Thank you so much for watching.